hi everyone. Sorry it's been a while since I've made a YouTube video, but I've just been really busy and just haven't had the time to sit down and try to make a video lately. But I wanted to try to do one today and just try to catch up a little bit because there there's a lot of signs in the heavens that I wanted to talk about. And I just want to thank um, Diana, Jesus' servant, for bringing this to my attention. She had actually mentioned this in a comment. It's been a week, as you can see, and I just haven't had a chance to do a video about this yet. But she's talking about the meteor shower that's coming from the constellation Perseus, the, the Perse seed meteor shower. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But it talks about it here in this video that Diana had mentioned by Nemesis Maturity. And you can watch this video if you want to have all the information about this meteor shower. But it's supposed to take place from July 17th through August 24th. That's when the Earth passes through Comet Swift-Tuttle through the, the debris of that. And so there should be a lot of meteors that will be taking place and it's supposed to be a lot more than it usually is and so that is a very interesting sign and Diana had um, mentioned this uh, link she had given me the link to this this is the gospel of the stars where it talks about all the different constellations and she had mentioned how interesting it is that Perseus actually means breaker or deliverer in, in the Hebrew it says the one who breaks open the way as in Micah 2 12 and 13 and so I'm just gonna pull up Micah 2 12 and 13 so we can see what that says And it says, I will surely assemble Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them, and the Lord on the head of them." So that's very interesting that this meteor shower is taking place, but this is in conjunction with all the other signs that are going on in the heavens. And also in this link right here, just looking at the constellation Leo, which is talked about right here, it's really interesting to see all that's associated with the constellation Leo because it's not just the constellation Leo that's appearing in the sky. You also have Hydra over here which represents um, the serpent and it appears as if Leo is, is treading on the serpent and then you have the, the head of the serpent over here and then this cup right here represents the the cup of God's wrath it's uh, the constellation crater the cup and then you also have Corvus the crow over here which represents the the raptors that, that come in the battle of Armageddon to, to eat the flesh of, of the armies and then of course Virgo is right next to it which is the Revelation 12 sign and so if you also go to the this um, link right here the online pl planetarium and look at everything that you can see in the sky during this time you, you can see Leo here and then you can see Hydra underneath Leo you can see crater right here the cup and over here you can see Gemini now it doesn't say this in the gospel of the stars in this link but I just happen to believe that Gemini 
represents the two witnesses. But that's what I've always leaned towards, even though that's not the official meaning for Gemini as um, as depicted here. But I just happen to, to think that. And then over here you have Taurus, which I've talked about Taurus before, which was a, the constellation um, that was during the time of Pentecost, the, the original Pentecost after the first 50 day count. And I had also talked about a video that was done by Mark Biltz where he had talked about the significance of Taurus and he talked about the, the brightest star that's in the constellation Taurus which is the star Aldebaran and I just had mentioned in my video this is not something Mark Biltz had mentioned but I just thought it was interesting that the brightest star is known as the Alpha Tav which um, in Hebrew the, the letter A is Aleph but it's, um, it's still a letter A. The, the Greek name for it is Alpha for the letter A. And then Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And in Greek, the last letter of the alphabet is Omega. So in Greek, um, God or Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. And in Hebrew, um, he's the Aleph and the Tav. And, and this star is actually known as the Alpha Tav. So it's like the first letter of the Greek alphabet, last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And there's some interesting things going on with Aldebaran. It's going to be in view during this time. And then if you look over here, it talks about the the moon is, is going to go before the planet Aldebaran on the 29th. And so if you change the date here to the 29th, you'll see how it makes a conjunction with the moon or the moon's right in front of Aldebaran on, on that date. And there's just some other interesting things coming up in the month of August that are interesting. You see here on the 31st, you have the constellation Draco, which is the, the dragon. And so that's going to be in view. And over here you have the star Vega. Which there's some interesting things about that star as well. If you actually go back to the 24th where it talked about the summer triangle. Which um, I believe that's still visible even after the, the 24th. I think it's visible throughout the month of. August, but you see the the star Vega is connected to this triangle that's formed, and this is also something that's talked about in a Nemesis Maturity video that I just looked at a, a minute ago, and I'll put the links to these videos so you can have all the information, but I just watched this video too where where he talks about that and how this triangle is formed but what's interesting is that this uh, star Vega is in the constellation Lyra which I had talked about in my April meteor shower table which had all all these different words that were connected with this constellation and, and with that meteor shower that took place in April. And the matrix was all about rejoicing in heaven. It had the words heart, talked about symbols and, and just rejoicing in heaven is what the matrix was about in that table. And it had all these words that were connected to this constellation, which is a, a heart shaped like a heart. And the brightest star is Vega. And then this um, this star forms a triangle during the summer with these other stars here that are talked about in this video. But it's interesting that it mentions all these other constellations. This one right here 
forms the northern cross. Th this is part of the triangle. And then this one, which is an eagle, also forms the triangle, which the eagle always reminds me of Revelation 12, the, the woman fleeing with the, the wings of an eagle. So there's all these signs in the heavens that all have to do with the, the return of Christ. And I don't know if I mentioned over here where you have Leo, that you have the, the planet Hydra right underneath that and the crater, the cup right here which represents the cup of wrath and then Corvus represents the raptors that come during the battle of Armageddon and I believe Gemini represents the, the two witnesses and then Taurus I had talked about in, in one of my videos that Mark Biltz had done a really excellent video about the constellation Taurus and what all that represents and then right above this you have the constellation Perseus or yeah I think it's called Perseus and this is where the Perseid meteor shower is going to come from and Perseus means in the Hebrew it means deliverer or breaker as is talked about in, in Micah 2 so it's very interesting all these signs that are going to be in the heavens during this time and then as I had said on August 4th, um, that's when Venus is right at the thigh of Leo. So that's an extremely interesting time to be watching. You can see the constellation Leo right here. And then Venus is right there at the thigh, at the front leg. Jupiter is still right in the range of the back leg on August 4th. And that brings me to my August 4th table, which I still haven't finished going over. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit as well. And I'm obviously probably not going to have time to finish it in this video, but I want to just try to get started on it. But one thing that I wanted to point out is that before I had even put in August 4, when I was just looking at the August, just the word August and nothing else, I was looking at the four different matrices that came up, which is one of the reasons I put it in August 4th, because the fact that there's four that come up, I thought might be a, a sign to look for that date. But before I even did that, the, there's only one verse that comes up on that particular matrix when you just put in August. And that scripture is in Luke 2, 1, and it says, Now it came to pass in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. And when I read that verse, I immediately thought of the, the New World Order. That's just what came to mind immediately. So I tried putting that in. I tried to put in some other things too. But when I put in New World Order, that came up immediately. And then I just tried to put some other terms in. So that's why these other terms are in here as well. But um, I guess I could just try to quickly go over some of these terms over here. Um, I had also put in Iran and Syria because I think I saw Syria coming up in the matrix. You see it right here. So because I saw Syria come up, I put in Iran, Syria, and then I put war in three, and we already have world here. So world, war, three comes up, and I'm at four 14 minutes and 26 seconds. So I'm about out of time. So I'm just going to continue with this in the next video. Thank you.